Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters of creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy us and all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the promised land. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your daughters and sons, no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you light our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Micah, the sixth chapter. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Our second reading is Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Hear what the Lord says. This is the way chapter 6 of Micah begins. A call to pay attention, to listen, because the Lord is trying to get our attention. And the Lord was definitely trying to get the attention of the people in Israel through Micah. They were doing some things that were uh, definitely not what they were called to do. And Micah's job was to remind them of this, but also at the same time, to remind them that God is faithful. So the question that we enter into our reading with today and into this sermon is who can enter into God's presence? A question to ask ourselves about who is blessed. Can you earn God's blessing? Is there something you can do? I mean, it's almost pretty easy to look around in society and see people who look like they're blessed. I mean, it's easy to see in our places where people who uh, tend to have those trappings of life, right? They look like they have the blessing of God in, uh, in good jobs or, or uh, significant incomes or all of the different things they have in life. And yet, that isn't where Micah is focusing his attention today. In fact, he even asked those questions, well, what shall I come before the Lord? Is it, is it in my offerings? Is it the way that I, that I sacrifice to God? Is that how I can come into God's presence? He asked the question and gives us the instruction, 
hear what the Lord says? I mean, who can come into God's presence? Hear what the Lord says. This connects us back to Deuteronomy 6, this place called the Shema. And it's at this spot where Moses is giving the commandment of the Lord to God's people. And the commandment is pretty simple. It's love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Moses goes on to talk about how really the ones who are blessed are the ones who live into these commandments and live them out in their lives. Following the commandments leads to a blessing. And why is that? Is it because they get the, the commandments perfectly? Well, no, we find out very quickly that people really struggle to get those commandments down perfectly. But really, the blessing is a gift from God. We're blessed because God chooses to bless us. And it isn't necessarily with material things. No, the blessing is the opportunity to live in a relationship with God and to live in relationship with our neighbor. Hear what the Lord says. In Matthew 5, Jesus tells us who the blessed are. The poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are persecuted and reviled because of their proclamation of the gospel. When we line up what we would consider to be someone who is blessed, that doesn't really seem like those are blessed people. In fact, those seem like those are people on the opposite end of the spectrum. And yet, the placement of this passage in the gospel according to Matthew is critical. It's there as Jesus is teaching on the mountain, and he's talking to, to this crowd of people and to his disciples and telling them what does it mean to live a blessed life. And the people brought with them this idea that if they just got the commandments right, if they just did those perfectly, then that would lead to a blessing. But Jesus starts to take that down. Jesus says, look, I didn't come here to abolish the law for you, and the commandments, I came to fulfill it for you because we can't do it perfectly. If it was up to us, nobody would be blessed. And Jesus goes on to talk about these different ideas about, uh, about murder and about adultery. And, he, and he, what he does is he not only talks about the action, but he goes at the intent and says, we can't even get the intent right of these things. You need to have God at work in your life. And even in the middle of this long teaching, we, we get uh, instructions about how to pray. The Lord's Prayer is in this section. And at the end of this, we get this reminder not to worry. And we can't even get that right. I mean, I know about if you're like me, boy, worry is something that's so tough to get out of our lives. Because we worry. We worry about ourselves. We worry about others. But Jesus says the ones who are blessed are the poor in spirit those who mourn, those who are meek. Now, how could that possibly be? It's because of what happens to them through God's children. Jesus takes these seemingly backwards blessings and flips the script on them and transforms these people, these situations, into blessings. And how? How does that happen? How could someone who is poor in spirit be blessed? How could someone who is mourning be blessed? How can someone who is meek be blessed? The answer, dear friends in Christ, is through you and through me. To get back to Micah today, the question is, hear the word of the Lord. How can we come into God's presence? Who is righteous? The answer is on our own, no one is. But through God's grace, we all are. You all have been declared righteous by God's grace in Christ. The way that those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, the way that they are blessed is because God sends people like you and I to enact God's justice in the world, to speak up on behalf of those who are feeling persecuted, to take our privilege and to help those who are poor in spirit, to comfort those who are mourning. And, and through the words of Micah, God uses each and every one of us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly. We get to become the blessings to those who don't feel very blessed. 
We get to bear the gospel with us out into our lives, to do justice, to live righteously, to love kindness, to be kind in the world. And boy, do we need kindness right now. And to walk humbly, to not think of yourself as more blessed or to think of yourselves as mightier than someone else. To remember that your worth as God's child rests not in what you can do at all, but instead you are declared to be worthy. You are declared to be beloved by God because God has willed it to be so. The greatest gift we have been given is the blessing of grace shown in the love of God in Christ that was given freely to each and every one of us. Thanks be to God for the ways in which this grace is working in and through each of us. Thanks be to God for the ways that this grace opens our ears to hear what God has to say. Thanks be to God for opening our eyes to see the need in the world. Thanks be to God for opening our hearts to share what we've got with others. Thanks be to God for reminding us that we are God's children and that there is nothing in this world that can stop God from loving us or anyone in this world, even if that means using us to make sure people find out about this very promise. So be of good cheer, dear friends in Christ. Do justice, love kindness, and make your walk of faith humble in the Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. 
We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. Call together into the Spirit's loving embrace, let us pray for the renewal of the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray, Holy God, for the unity of the church universal. Draw your church together into one great company of disciples, together following our teacher, Jesus Christ, into every walk of life, together serving in Christ's mission to the world, and together witnessing to your love wherever you send us. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, omnipotent God, for the well-being of creation. We give you thanks for transforming the chaotic waters of creation into the saving waters that nourish and sustain our earth. Renew us every day by your water and your word. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, righteous God, for peace and justice in the world. Lead the nations of the world away from the wilderness of sin and evil and toward the light of love and peace. Give us a thirst for justice for all. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, compassionate God, for all in need, to those who are thirsty for love, for justice, for peace, for belonging, give the water of life. For those who are suffering or in pain, bring healing balm and peace. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, faithful God, for the renewal of all life, Refresh us with your living water and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Embolden us with your promise and your presence. Christ be your light. Shine in your church gathered today. Receive our thanksgiving, eternal God, for all who have died in the faith, for the fervent witness and testimony of the woman at the well, May we know the fullness of the new life that you prepare for us in your kingdom. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. As we make our thank offerings today, we share in a tradition that goes back to the 1800s or even earlier. Then when it seemed that there was not enough money to carry out the work of the church, the women would act together as sent or might socialites. Each woman would set aside offerings at home throughout the year in Thanksgiving for blessings received. And on occasion, the women would come together as we do today joining their offerings to support the ministry of many kinds. When Women of the ELCA was formed in 1987, we committed to continue this tradition of giving in gratitude for blessings. Each year, in thousands of congregations, thank offerings are given to support the life-changing ministries of the women of the ELCA. Together, we do more than we could ever do apart. 
in gratitude for all God has given to us and with hope for all that is to come, let us now give our thank offerings. Together we pray. God of grace, you have showered us with abundance and entrusted to us the ministries of women of the ELCA. Help us to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action, and promote healing and wholeness in the church, the society, and the world. Accept these gifts and our prayer that nurtured by your word, filled with your spirit, and fed at your table, we may share with gladness all that you have shared with us until all creation is satisfied. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we offer a prayer for our veterans and for their families. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardship endured by their families and friends, so that we may never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Hear us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our God calls us to do justice. May you find strength in God's grace. Amen. Christ Jesus calls us to love kindness. May you find comfort in Christ's gentleness. Amen. The Holy Spirit calls us to walk humbly with our triune God. May you always find joy in God's love and justice. Amen. You disappointed, you desperate for heaven, you know what 
what it's like to be tired and only a shell of yourself. You start to believe you don't have what it takes. Cause it's all you can do just to move, much less finish the race. Rejoice and be glad in the light of God's love. Let us go forth in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God.